So the year's moving on quick and we're in the third week of September already. We've got the first signs of autumn kicking in as well. I have noticed it. And today the weather's a little bit blowy, a bit cooler than it has been of late. And yeah, the first signs of autumn are approaching. But what I like to do at this time of year, I like to wander around the garden and have a look at what's, what's happening, what's working and what's not working. And then I like to decide on the changes some of the changes I, I decide to make now I will commit to and change and some I'll think about as you should do now I did this yesterday and this is just really a little add-on or what I call a mini project the tiles down there were the tiles that were left over when I did the quarry tile path and the problem we've had as we've come out of the French doors is that we've been kicking stones across onto the floating deck and it, it becomes a bit of an annoyance after a while. So what I decided, in fact, I decided this quite a while ago, but I, I couldn't make my mind up what I wanted to use. So in my bid to use up what I've already got, I've used the quarry tiles. And I think that's going to be very effective indeed. So some of the changes that I will make will be just moving plants around. And looking at this, there's not too much that needs doing in this board, but there is... There is a bit I would like to change. Now, one of the changes I did make the other day was to clip one of the main branches off this off this elder onto the right-hand side there that I've now taken off. And this is one of my cuttings that I took. And I decided that I needed to do it now to prevent that third branch coming up, or that fourth branch coming up too far to the right and covering the floating deck next year. So that's been dealt with. And that should be okay next year. The old down there is giving me a bit of trouble at the minute. And that's where I took one of the bamboos from. I've got to think what I'm going to put in there. This all needs a dig through really, this border. And I will do that as, as autumn kicks in. But I really need to be thinking now about what, what I'm going to do with this. Because there are some changes I would like to make immediately to this so area. The quarry tile path's settling in very nice now. Looking really good. Well, this is the border I've just been talking about, and I, I do need to do something about it. I can now see underneath the floating deck again, and that's because I've taken away a Eupatorium. For those that watch my videos regular, you'll realise that there is something missing, and it is this. Eupatorium, Maculatum, and this one's called Glutball. And I split it last year. It's a bit of a spreader, really, that particular Eupatorium, as are most of them, but... It, it spread enough for me to be able to split some bits out of it. And I put one there. And I've since decided that it's not going to work long term. So I'm having a rethink about this. And I shall visit this border several times before I finally commit to something. Overall, it's worked quite well for me. So we've got to just give it a bit more thought on that one. One of the other changes that I have made, and this was just yesterday was that very Eupatorium is here now and it never really affected it when I dug it out. never affected it at all, apart from this casualty. And that'll be down to me, that. I will have damaged that one as I moved it. But it settled in really quickly on its own. Now, I did like the Calamagrostis, the grass behind it. I loved it being at the back of it. But I wanted a bit of colour so that when we're were sat inside the house through those French doors there that we could our eye would be drawn down to this area to a bit more colour and I'd, I'd thought about putting a Rudbeckia in here the tall Rudbeckia lanciniata and then I settled on this eventually now that doesn't mean that that's going to stay there that, that could end up changing I could end up changing tomorrow or even today but I do love Eupatoriums the original idea is for this Miscanthus, and this is Miscanthus sinensis malapartus, and probably one of the best, but doesn't seem to be doing very well for me at the moment, although it is still a young plant. I've struggled quite a lot with Miscanthus in this particular area, so I'm going to try and add 
a good bit of nutrient and I'm going to try and incorporate some sand into it because grasses prefer a sandy type soil and we're on quite heavy soil here. That doesn't mean grasses don't do well on it, they do do well on it but I could do better. So we're still playing with this bit of an area and this is what would we call this a third reincarnation of the planting scheme in here. We've now settled for a kind of clover as I did on one of my previous videos and yesterday I dug up some Allium cephalon, so the sticky little things down there that's what they are and the idea is that the Hakanacloa will completely cover this area because them plants will eventually make three foot wide by at least two and a half to three foot high and this whole area will be covered in this lovely flowing grass and then the Alliums will just simply push their way through them and look quite nice so generally I'm happy with this area but there's always room for improvement as of yet I'm not I'm not quite sure what that is now this is the cloister pergola and the only thing I'm waiting for here is that back section and the right and left section of me to get clothed in the roses which is happening now as you can see so it's doing quite well at the moment it's got ramblers and climbers growing through it i've also got a clematis growing up and through it but in general it's it's okay it could be better again everything everything can be better so it still needs to mature but it's not looking bad overall and that helianthus salicifolia which i said probably is in the wrong place i still like it here it still looks really good so i think i shall keep it there and that's the big tall plant at the back yeah that's great and the roses the roses are looking good this is the second flush for the roses so that area there is what i want each of the walls of this pergola to look like i want them clothed in growth and they will be over time each one of these areas will be clothed in growth and they look great at the minute with just the ironwork there with that mesh i love it but eventually that will be clothed in all sorts of growth now i've been messing about with this border a little bit i ain't done too much one of the bigger changes that i have made is obviously i've taken that elder out already the little elder that i had down there it just wasn't going to cut it long term it was just not going to work so we've put that anemone in there and i think that's a lot better long term and it was just simply ripped out from here so we just took a bit out ah there's still little bits and bobs that i have to do this is obviously not right because it's got a bit of a fungal disease going on as you can see on the leaves which is suggesting to me that it needs a little bit more a little bit more air around it so that's possibly a move and something i need to bear in mind that i need to make miscanthus are coming on lovely now and that's a lovely one that one if you just hang on and keep watching the film i'll show you a little bit of a mistake of mine a little rookie mistake i've or oh, that's happened to me rather than i've made so while we're up here we'll, we'll discuss this area and this is the gravel area and i've pretty much always been happy with this the area in front of the car there you know again who knows what might happen but overall it's looking pretty good so there's some minor pruning i need to do such as that pinus there we'll we'll address that as autumn pushes in but the one thing i've i've not been happy with for a well forever really since i took out the spirea and i had to take the spirea out because it was just it was just not doing it it was just rubbish and that was in here but it did fill a big hole since then i've had to come up with all sorts of different ideas and it's not really it's not really right yet but i have got some some lovely plants in here that i'd they're either going to stay in here or i'm possibly going to move them i don't know yet i don't know there's a parotia, that uh, orangey-reddy thing at the back there. There. 
that one at the background that's probably going to be moved i don't think it's happy in there and i don't think long term it's it's going to be any good but i've got i've got an idea where i might put that the symphotrichum's looking great this particular one it's new to me last year and it has a massive white flower on it. it's great and it's called herb stickney and it's a, a new a new england a new england aster but they're now called symphotrichums and as you know we're going to make some big changes here we're going to put three four more of these sections in so that'll make five overall and you will walk down here and you'll go underneath the arch and i'm going to be calling this the telegraph pole pergola walk and you'll walk all the way down here and it'll be clothed in different types of climbers i've got a rose ready already and there'll be one or two other climbing plants that will be put over it because it will need it and that's going to look absolutely wonderful that i'm a bit excited to be honest about that one because that is going to change this part of the garden completely and it's going to give me opportunities to put up lots of different types of climber because that is going to be about what 20 foot maybe 25 foot and we'll have to work out which plants we're going to put in there as i said i've already collected two plants for it ready ready to go one being a wisteria the other being a climbing rose in fact a very vigorous climbing rose more of a rambler really this is a bit of a shady border and this is up near Kathy's Arbor seat. We've been playing about with planting in this one and I've really got to just have a little bit of patience on this area and just wait and let things develop. This hydrangea, this quirky foley, which is called burgundy. It will turn a burgundy colour. I can see the signs on the outer leaves at the minute or the edges of the leaves of it turning already. So that's going to go a deep burgundy colour. And that'd be good. And there's one or two new introductions. Actually, most of these have been introduced this year, most of these plants. But there's always changes can be made. For me, being such a grass expert, I put this grass in here and I've been calling it Goliath all year, waiting for it to grow. And then suddenly it started spurting in its growth. And I thought, oh, that's fine. You know, it obviously wants to do that this year. And it's not Goliath. It looks to me to be just a simple giganteus. Because often my labels get pulled out in the nursery bed or the nursery area section. And I've obviously seen one that's got the word G on it, which would mean I, I must have taken as meaning Goliath because I knew roughly where Goliath was. But it's not. It's turned out to be giganteus or Miscanthus giganteus. I didn't want that there. Do I leave it? I don't know. Kathy thinks it looks all right. But what I wanted was some sort of a, a flowering miscanthus, and Gigantis is not known for that. So that's probably the only change this year that I shall make. It is bugging me to the extreme that I may remove it by the end of next week. I may have lifted all of that, taken it out, put another grass in its place or some other plant. So again, for those that do watch my YouTubes on a regular basis, you may notice that there's something missing here. And there is it's a berberus i mentioned it on a previous video that I, I wasn't holding any hope out for it looked like it was going to die and let's show you what happened and there it is there's the very tree or large shrub it wasn't hard to get out it literally popped out as i put uh, the spade underneath it i knew once i'd done that that the likelihood is it had already died really always well on its way to dying so i've had to take it out nightmare absolute nightmare for me and sometimes these offer new opportunities but i i'd got that right i did it looking very nice indeed i've been working on that shrub for some time and clipping it back but then i noticed some weeks ago that it didn't look right it looked like it was dying and it has it's died it's gone and died on me so i was uh most annoyed mainly because i had a cotinus in this corner and the choice was between the cotinus and the berberis what was going to stay and i decided the cotinus wasn't really right it was sprawling too much out over this area and i didn't want that because i knew i was going to be putting a path down here 
to down towards the nook which at the time was called the secret garden so maybe if i'd left that and put an archway through it we could have called it the secret garden because you probably wouldn't have really noticed it was there but i didn't you know i, I changed it i made that decision and changed it so what we're left with now is this this gaping indentation in the soil but it's all good because it's given me an opportunity to rework this little corner although this corner is okay there's one or two things that are not working for me the taxes and i can't remember what this one's called i will try and do some research on this one and it's a more sprawling but smaller taxes i will which is a yew tree or a yew shrub in this case i wasn't 100 percent sure that it's going to work here but actually looking now that now that the berberis is missing it does seem to look a little bit better there's no changes to be made with this. This is that Miscanthus Salutaria riparis, which I'm really happy with, I can tell you. 14 feet that's made. That's the official, the official measurement I've taken on it. And I'm ever so pleased with that. But remember, if you're going to get this particular one, this Miscanthus Salutaria riparis, you really must give it some root barrier control because it is a runner. And it's filled that sheep bale feeder quite nicely now and that's exactly the effect i was looking for and it looks fantastic those stems on there those plummy ready stems are, are looking lovely so the nook i'm quite happy with the nook i think the only thing that this needs doing to it now is it really just needs topping up with the bark I've not done, I've said I'm going to do it time and time and time again, but I haven't done it yet. Everything's developing nicely in here, and there's not really anything that I need to change, apart from the odd weed that needs removing. Hmm, that's not, that's not very good, having that gap there. I know I've done some pruning outside, so maybe we've pruned away a little bit too much. I don't want the view through that. This viburnum's doing really nice. And then there's the euphorbia. Whistleberry garnet that I complained about taking over. It's looking great in here. It can do what it wants in here. But everything else I'm quite happy with. So there's not really any changes I want to make in the nook at all. It is what it is. And it just needs time now to mature. And that'll be it. So some of the changes I do make as I see them. And I think I need to deal with that now. And this being one of them. This is a, a holly. A variegated holly that was already here when we moved in and it's always looked interesting it's always had that bend in it which i really like it's a shame it's straightening up at the top now but it is but the bend in it makes it look interesting and slowly slowly i've been lifting the branches and lifting what we call it skirt lifting that up and it had been dropping well below where i wanted it now i know it's dropped well below that because the bird box you can see what last year this time last year i could see it like that but two days ago when I came here you could not see that bird box at all and I needed to remove some of the lower limbs which I've now done here we are look at this look at that loads loads of them so don't be afraid to remove limbs just take them off if they're wrong they're wrong and one of the reasons that I wanted to take them off was to get this view back through like that but the most important thing was I needed more light through to this border it's really it's a sunny border and it gets plenty of sun in the summer but as autumn approaches this bed gets less and less sun and i needed the light for these particular miscanthus so it's all looking good it's all looking mature i mean look at the berries on this this year there's hundreds of them it's done the best i've seen in a long time this particular one and that's looking good so as for changes 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 in this border do i want any well i've been going through it all year and i've been making changes as we've gone along and i think i'm quite happy with it at the moment there are probably one or two changes i should make but i don't know if i will i'm happy with that euphorbia there that's doing really well now and i shall i shall commit this to camera I suspect through winter, if we have a bad winter once more, a lot of that will get damaged. But hopefully we'll come back. It is a big euphorbia and it's a euphorbia cross pasteurii. It makes, makes quite a big shrub. But time will tell with that. There appears to be gaps 
through this border but there isn't this is i've left spaces another thing that you have to be careful of is not to over plant too much although i often say over plant and have some what we call sacrificial plants or i call sacrificial plants sometimes you can put too much in and it hinders the growth so you you've got to bear that in mind as well and i want this main area here to be all about this euphorbia and that's my own malachi and it's superb it's looking great that's just a cutting from the original plant and it's looking fantastic everything else is doing all right it's next to the wildlife dip pools just behind it there and we'll have a look at that in a minute so that looks really good there now that's the cloister pagoa that we visited earlier it's looking great isn't it i'm quite pleased with that i'm, I'm very pleased with it i must admit and this eupatorium look at the size of that head it's huge i've never i've never ever had a eupatorium that's that that's that big and i did i did send the nursery where i got that from which is dove cottage up in halifax a email and they've sent me pictures of theirs back and it has funnily enough it has a few that size and then some ordinary sized one so it has smaller heads and large heads like that so i've got to wait till next year there's nothing i can do about that this year i've got to just simply wait and see what it does in its second year and hopefully it'll send up a lot more a lot more stems i can't wait i love eupatoriums and talking of eupatoriums there's one of my skinny minis and it's now through the best of its time it's now looking like that but it still looks great and it still has something to offer the garden and i will not chop that back down yet in fact that won't be chopped till spring the leaves will fall the stems will be there but it still looks interesting this is an old dustbin one of the very old dustbins actually the original type dustbins is very heavy without the water but look i use it to collect water and to be quite honest with you i need more containers down this side this is the back of the shack and there's plenty of room to put more containers down here to catch that water so maybe we'll look at that through the winter and see what we can do and that's the long path look how long that is us great long path that if you, if you was into running you could probably use that as an 100 meter sprint track it's not 100 meters i don't think but i'll be good for exercising i get plenty of exercise in the garden I, I really don't need to run it's a waste of energy so i'm quite happy with this alianthus and the support i gave it early on has worked a treat as we can see it's helped to contain it and help to stop it flopping because as i've said before it has an annoying habit of flopping a little bit and we left some of the ones out didn't we we left them out there you go so the smaller ones are not inside that support and that's what they've done and that's as a direct result of not supporting them so i'd say that's 10 foot now easily seven eight oh maybe not maybe i'm exaggerating maybe that's eight foot maybe nine anyway it's looking good whatever so this border here this is the boardwalk border and as i said from earlier there's there's changes been made all year on it but i don't know if we need any more simply got to let things mature sometimes and i am one of those who like to move things around a bit too regular but in this case i've left a lot of these plants in here for some time but i have added i've added some more plants but going back to some of the the miscanthus types there's a miscanthus there see if we can get closer to it and we'll just bring it up while i'm here that miscanthus there i bought as cascade and i i remember mentioning this last year on one of the videos that i wasn't 100 percent sure that that was cascade that didn't look right i bought it from a very good source i'm not going to tell you who but at the moment, that's not doing what it should be doing in its flower. But we'll wait and we'll see because it should be more cascading. Now, that might come with maturity. But what I've done as a, an insurance policy is I've been to another nursery and bought another one. Well, sent away for one. And I know these people definitely keep them true. So we shall see. And if it does the same early on, then we know it's simply the age of the plant. That's all down to time. So while we're here, we'll give this a mention as well. This is Symphotrichum, and it gets covered in bees all the time anyway, but it's got a common butterfly on it. It's a really nice one, this one. And this one's called Marina Walkonski. It's a real good doer. 
the colours are amazing. And I'm not really going to do any more to this one. This one's, I'm quite happy where that is at the moment. So this elder is more of an upright form. This is Black Tower. And over time it will get taller and it'll stay relatively skinny. And it could be okay here actually. It could be okay because what will happen over time is that will actually grow tall and we may allow some of the, the branches to actually come across this area. So it'll grow up and it'll come up and it'll go over this area here. So that would work, but that's something I've got to wait and see. And I'm sure when I planted it originally, that's probably what I had in my mind. So this is the wildlife dip pools and this has been a great success and I've loved, I've loved looking at this all year. And there are a couple of real, there's no real major changes to make to this, except that we've put in this hoster here, which is Empress Wu. And we contained it because we was having problems with slugs. But as you can see, it's not really made a difference. I've not been able to keep my eye on it properly. And they've absolutely hammered it. Now, I'm thinking that, I think that's one of the changes I may make it. I may remove that completely, take that out and the pot itself and just plant something more appropriate. I've put other plants under here that are also not doing very good. So the reason that they haven't done as well is because they're just not getting enough water, even though they're getting enough sun. And that's a lift from that one there. And that's Salicaria uh, fire kurt, so. And it's a, a cracking plant, but it's just not, it's, I, I seriously thought this was gonna get way more water than it's got. But looking at it now, I can see it's quite raised up in the border. Whereas the rheum, which I deliberately put there to, to actually take the overflow from the pond, the big leaved thing there, the rhubarb looking one, that is designed to get all the, the off spill of the ponds or the pools. And it will take you around to the other side and show you that you can tell that the lifrum doesn't get it, simply doesn't get it. Now, when I stand here, you can see, so that was deliberately set so that when that overspills, it gets the rim. And I, I honestly thought that the lifrum to the left of it would get enough moisture from that. But although it's looking okay, it, it looked way better last year when it was more open and exposed. So it's not doing very well at all. Ah, changes, changes. But otherwise, I'm quite happy with that. It's looking good, so not really any changes to make there. That doesn't mean I won't make any. This overall is looking great. Okay, the holly's spoiling that look at the moment. I've yet to remove that holly from that boardwalk, and then that'll open that up again, and it'll look great. So we've put that oak barrel there. It's only a small oak barrel, that. But it does, it looks all right. It's worked this year. There's some new planting in there. The euphorbia that I'd desperately looked for, which is purple and gold, should expose its colours as winter comes. So we can check that out to make sure that the purple is where it should be. And then hopefully we'll be able to identify that as being one of Malachi's parents because that also produces that purpley red tip. But it has a completely different coloured leaf on this one. Even though it's small, it's not as blue. Not as blue a leaf whereas the young growth on malachi as you can see from this i think it's the camera's picking up is blue definitely blue so that's a really nice effect and looks great oh, i've just got to show you this rose again look at that it's great that's gertrude jekyll and if you're going to get only one rose that you want try and get that one the scent is amazing it's a repeat flowerer it's practically flowered all year for me, on and off, but it's carried on. And now it's given us that final flush. And it's just your typical English-looking rose there. Beautiful, with a lovely scent. And it's covering this trellis work, lovely. Exactly what I wanted. And that's the other Eliant, the Silisfolia. Whereas the other one was Silisfolius orgialis, the one I showed you earlier. It's very similar, but not as rugged. So I'm quite happy with this area. As I've said, I've shown you that area. I've shown you most areas now. I'll talk to you on the next one. Ta-da.